the Richmond 400 is brought to you by the Heartbeat of America, today's Chevrolet, and by Goodyear Eagle Tires. Goodyear, because there really is a difference. And by Coors, the first draft beer in bottles and cans. Coors, the original. And by Quaker State Motor Oil. The big Q stands for quality. Always has, always will. Well, the season opening hype and hyperbole are all behind us. The Daytona 500 is in the history books. Today, we begin the battle for the Winston Cup Stock Car Championship. Hello, everyone. I'm Dave Despain. TBS Sports is live at Frigid Fairgrounds Raceway, Richmond, Virginia, awaiting the start of what may be the coldest Winston Cup Stock Car race in history. Predicted high today, 40 degrees. It is an historic afternoon, the last race on this tired old half-mile oval, soon to be replaced by a state-of-the-art three-quarter mile facility. But the big story here today, not the weather, not the history, it is the championship. And here's why. For all the talk about the Daytona 500, the man who wins that race rarely goes on to the championship. It hasn't happened for 10 years. But three of the last seven Richmond 400 winners have indeed gone on to the most prestigious crown in American motorsports, the championship of Winston Cup Racing. This is the kingmaker of American stock car races, and that's why those drivers out there at the line are ready to push, shove, beat, bang, bend fenders, do whatever it takes to win this race. You're going to see quite a show here today, and coincidentally, one of those trio, one, of, one member of the trio who actually started their championship quest here in Richmond is also the new 500 winner. That's Bobby Allison, and he's with the man who broadcast his first race from here back when this track was dirt, Chris Economic. Bobby, seven times you've won here at Richmond, and this is the last race on this half-mile track, but the question I have, is this Buick, this new Buick, going to be as good here as it was for you at Daytona? Well, Chris, we didn't start out very good. Our qualifying was uh, very poor, but there is a Buick on the pole, so I think a, a Buick can do good here, but we've got a lot of catching up to do. We're, we're behind right now. You going for the championship? Yeah, we're... Uh, we're going to go for it uh, every race and just do the best we can, and uh, we'd love to have that championship again. All the best, Steve. Bobby. Now let's go down pit road to Mark Allen. And with Davey Allison, he hasn't got a short track victory yet, and he had a little bit of trouble yesterday in practice. Backed it into the wall. The damage was mostly cosmetic. The car repair, Davey went out and qualified five positions better this year than he did last year at this race. And the question, Davey, is what did you learn from that practice crash? Well, I learned that you got to be really careful what you do here at Richmond. Uh, this racetrack is, is, is kind of leads you into the corner faster than you can go, and we just let the car get away from us and backed in the wall. Luckily, it didn't do much damage. It was just cosmetic and went back out and qualified pretty well. What are you going to try to be doing out there in the first 100 laps today? We just want to feel everything out under race conditions and, and make adjustments to the car as we go along. and try to do the best we can with this Havlin Star Thunderbird today. We feel like we've got a real good shot at this race. Davey Allison starting 16th. Dave? Bobby and Davey Allison, the father-son team who were the story at Daytona last week. They both got to come through the field here today. We'll follow that from the STP Pit Communication Center. Right now, we're going to meet the TBS broadcast team that will call the shots in this race. And let's go now to the man who will have the play-by-play -play for you this afternoon, Ken Squire. Well, thank you, David. What a grand way to close out after 36 years this old car buster fairgrounds. The entire field, 30 cars, has qualified within one half second of each other for this event. The man that finished dead last, the Daytona 500 last Sunday, Morgan Shepard, he's on the pole. And the man that sat on the pole at 193 miles an hour at Daytona last week, he had to buy a provisional berth into this starting field. That's just how tough the competition's going to be today in this 400 lapper. A great car enthusiast, car owner, Johnny Hayes. Old Gabby's with us once again. What about it today? What's the story? Well, Ken, I had breakfast with Harry Gant this morning, and he told me that it's going to be tar wars out there today. And I said, tar wars? He said, yeah, tar wars. 
I said, what are tire wars? He said, between Goodyear and Hoosier. So I think tires are going to play an important role today. Well, indeed they are, because for the first time since 1978, when J.D. McDuffie put a car other than Goodyear shot on the pole, that car up in front, Morgan Shepard, has Hoosier tires, and 13 other cars do as well. It's going to be a rip-snorting race, John. Well, we came from Daytona, and everybody had restrictor plates. Everybody stayed in line, tried to be as safe as possible. But when it comes to Richmond, this is a bullies racetrack. You got to <laughs> knock people out of the way. You got to intimidate. So everybody's going to have a good show today. No, just staying in line like they did in Daytona. Push and shove Dick Butkus in your face racing. Let's go down to Chris Economac. He's standing by on pit road. I'm with a pole sitter, Morgan Shepard. Morgan, everybody says it's a cold weather and the track is dirty. What are the early laps going to be like in this race today? Well, they're going to be pretty treacherous today uh, because we do have a lot of mud where the cars have crossed the track over on uh, turn three and uh, everybody's going to have to really watch it, Chrissy. We want to wish you well in this Buick. Thank you. Now down again to Mark Allen. Dale Earnhardt qualified four one hundredths of a second slower. Dale, you dominated the last two hundred laps last time here. What do you think your possibilities are of doing the same today? Well, it's going to be a good race. You know, this is the same car we had last year. It's a good race car, so we'll be in good shape. Dale Earnhardt won both races here last year. Ken? The story truly today is Richard Petty. After that terrible incident a week ago, you can see the crowd that's amassing around car number 43 as Petty gets ready to climb in that car and prepare for this battle. Richard Petty one time said, listen, I can't even tell you exactly what my greatest thrill has been. The first race I drove, the first race I saw, the first race I won, or the 200th time I won. Racing's a thrill to me, every bit of it. And when the fun and excitement begin to lean toward boredom or worse yet work, then I'll walk away from it. But I'm not turning myself out to pasture just yet. I promise. And today, he continues to fulfill that promise after that terrible wreck just a week ago. Let's go quickly to Bob Varsha, who's standing by up in turn four of this half-mile facility. I am indeed in turn four, and behind me, some of the of new grandstand seats that have been built in the 19th. The only part of this old half-mile that a new three-quarter mile Richmond facility that you'll be seeing later this year here on TBS. And it's been a troublesome corner over the years. 15, 13 pilots this race. Bob Allison has been over this old fence. Petty and Bill Elliott have to it. And I've got a feeling that in the next three hours, my wanderings around this old half-mile track are going to bring me right back here to turn four for some moments in today's Richmond 400. Now back to Dave Despain. At least twice during the afternoon, while Bob will be wandering back here for our Goodyear Racing Updates, when we'll tell you what's going on elsewhere in the world of racing. The focus here in this third of a million dollar race, big money, and we're going to be adding to the payoff down here. One thing we'll do is keep track of the fastest laps in the race on our Timex Speed Track computer. The members of the pit crew of the driver who turns the fastest lap in the race will each get their own Timex Speed Track. We'll be watching for great performances outside the limelight and we have $1,700 worth of Mac Tools for the best of those performances, our Mac Tools Behind the Scenes Award. And, of course, the True Value Hardware people have $5,000 on the line at every Winston Cup race for the True Value Hard Charger, Bobby Allison, leading in those standings after the Daytona 500. Down on pit road, the drivers are saddling up, buckling themselves in. We'll be back for the starting lineup for the Richmond 400 right after this.